everybody, this is Ibex Ambassador Marone Golfman coming to you from beautiful Nome, Alaska, where we have just completed the 2024 Iditarod Trail Invitational. We are uh, gonna take a little bit to look at my bike, my rig, and everything I had with me on the journey up here. So this year I was running a Trek Farley 9.6 with the um, factory built components. So it had a GX drivetrain on it. Um, I ran a single rear Avid uh, mechanical brake. For my wheel set, I'm using a, a set of uh, Nexty um, 96 millimeter uh, fat rims with Bontrager Barbagazi tires that I self uh, studded with uh, grip stud. For my racks, I ran the uh, Trek fork and their custom rack setup and an old man mountain rack on the rear. And then for what bags I brought, uh, starting on the front end, I ran a uh, large handlebar roll that carries my full sleep system. Uh, that's a bag made by Bike Bag Dudes. Uh, in front of that, I just had a little custom, um, little access like bag that uh, Apocalypse Design made for me. Um, I ran two of the uh, Oveja Negra bootlegger fork bags that carried my thermoses in them on the front. For my pogies, I ran the 45 North Cobra Fifths. I had two Revelate Design feed bags on the front end, as well as a Mag Tank 2000 from Revelate Designs for my cockpit bag. I have this awesome custom uh, Apocalypse Designs frame bag. And then on the rear end, I'm running a set of the version one Nano Paneers by Revelate Designs and a custom uh, duffel roll on the rack uh, by Apocalypse Designs as well. So to break down what's inside of everything, let's go inside and get cozy. Yeah. <sighs> All right, let's get cozy. Oh, I'm gonna have to sit for this one. My body is, uh, turns out it kind of hurts. So anyways, all right. We're gonna start with uh, looking at uh, what gear was actually on my body uh, uh, while I was out there. So uh, we'll just start off with my jacket. Uh, this is the Ibex Wool Airline. So I uh, customized my puffy with a uh, rough uh, it is a wolf and wolverine ruff. And then I also uh, was wearing the wool air uh, vest. From there, as we move down, I had my Ibex um, hooded indie with, a, again, a custom sewed on pocket, insulated pocket for my cell phone um, to keep it uh, from dying in the cold. Um, below that, on my top layer, I wore a uh, Marina Wool uh, Vermont Bicycle Shop jersey. Uh, on top of that, I was wearing my hydration vest, just an old school Solomon uh, ultra running vest that I have found works well in the winter, and a three liter Osprey uh, bladder in there. Uh, moving down to my lower half, I was wearing um, a set of Ibex underwear, which I actually don't see here in this pile. Um, then I was wearing the, uh, I'm always, I always mess this up, the, 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 the Pro-Tech uh, Woolies on the bottom. And then uh, I have these pants that I really like. Uh, they are, it's called, L Lin Hungs, I think. Sorry for mispronouncing that. Uh, and they are just a really great, they're kind of a cargo pant. 
They have vents on the inner thighs, uh, which are really key, as well as vents on uh, the lower leg. And for me, that's really essential. I overheat really easily, and so I really need those. Uh, let's break down. I actually do have some stuff in the pockets. So kind of key to winter travel is also being mindful about keeping things from freezing. And so really the only way to keep anything from freezing out there is to keep it on my body. So my pockets were pretty full with a whole bunch of goodies. So let's see what we had here. Uh, extra batteries for my bike light. Uh, some, so those are Phoenix um, 3, uh, 3500 mAh batteries. Uh, I carried uh, two lighters uh, for starting fires. My toothpaste was in my pocket so I could always brush my teeth when my mouth was gotten gnarly. And the toothpaste didn't freeze. Uh, let's see, I had extra GoPro battery, um, my little multi-tool, and then my two uh, Dermatone products, the sunscreen and the wax rub, uh, and that's for my face um, and uh, to keep it. Uh, try to keep my skin from the cold, though you can see my face is a little bit gnarly and that's what what was. Uh, I generally kept my phone. Uh, if it wasn't in that chest pocket, it was often in my right pocket and it looks like I've got my headphones. That's those pants. Uh, love those. Oh yeah, I had a lower leg pocket. I kept my, uh, my trip wallet was in there. Let's see the last couple things, headgear. Uh, an Ibex buff, as well as my Ibex beanie. Um, and then on the hands, I wore a pair of the Ibex liner gloves. Um, and then I actually didn't start with these. I lost my mittens, and so I had to borrow some from my friend Clinton. Uh, these are some Mountain Hardware puffy, puffy mittens that really came, came in essential. And then the last piece of gear that I was wearing on my body uh, was the 45 North Wolfgar uh, boots with a uh, heat molded Intuition liner that I uh, installed into those. And then I actually had to change out my boots. These are an older version. I ran an even older version of the Wolfgars, uh, but my cleats broke mid-race, and so then I had these mailed out um, to uh, replace those. All right. Uh, next, we got my uh, handlebar uh, or front of the bag uh, set up. So let's start with the handlebar roll. This is a bag that I have. It's a bike bag dude um, handlebar roll bag. In this is what I keep my sleep system in. Um, and so it's really just, it's my sleeping bags in the center and on either side are my ultra puffy layers. So on the one side, I have uh, my down pants, just a pair of Patagonia synthetic down pants uh, that I would pull out as soon as if we were ever bivvying or if I had to stop and it was super cold, those go on. Um, and then on the other side, I kept kind of my like Arctic uh, ultra puffy. And so this is a mountain hardware uh, uber puffy that I love this thing. This thing is history. I've had this since I did an outdoor semester as a 16 year old. Uh, in high school, and I still still have the layer uh, ever since. Oh yeah, here's the, uh, looks like I got my second pair of uh, my Ibex liner gloves. These ones, uh, these ones got worn out real good. You can see I have uh, some, some finger, finger poking through going. That was great. Um, well, well loved. And then the final piece of gear that's in this bag is my Negative 40 sleeping bag. This is a uh, black ice uh, sleeping bag. Um, doesn't, isn't made anymore. This bag is super special. Uh, it has been lo uh, lent to me now two years in a row to do the uh, ITI. And um, it is, this thing has history. It's been uh, on the Iditarod Trail to Nome. I think this might have been like the fifth time that it's, that it's made its way here. It was uh, custom made for some mushers back in the 90s. and. Uh, still kicking. It's a great bag. Works really, really well. And then the other little bag I had on my front system is a little custom bag made by Apocalypse Designs. Um, I threw that. It just kind of clipped on on the outside of the handlebar roll. In there, I kind of just kept my essential 
um, extra little warm pieces. Sometimes I keep my headlamp in there. Uh, I would often keep my uh, sunglasses in there. Um, but yeah, I basically kept like an extra bag with my liner gloves, an extra Ibex buff here, um, and then some Descent 133 uh, gloves. That's kind of was my um, system for my hands. So I had some really thin liner gloves that I could put on, then put the Ibex liner gloves on top of those, and then put these over gloves on top of those if I needed to. And that's everything that was on, uh, on the front system. Sweet. Uh, next, let's, uh, we're just moving our way down the bike from front to back. So we'll, let's break down uh, the cockpit bag as well as the two feed bags. So, uh, and everything, uh, I have literally not touched the bag since I crossed the finish line. So I don't actually know quite where everything is in the, in the bike. So we're, we're figuring it out together. So let's start with the, uh, the MagTank 2000 bag that I kept on uh, as my cockpit bag. This I mostly kept uh, with a couple essentials that I would need if I ever need to grab them quickly. And then otherwise I was keeping uh, little quick snacks. So this actually is holding a lot of candy. So let's see, you got quite the collection still of, of baby candy bars. Um, that uh, the idea being when I just needed a real quick pick me up um, and needed uh, a sugar blast. So let's, so we're still not done. Still got more sugar. All right, I think that's all the candy bars. After that, I had a small thing of, of Sav. This is a Super Sav out of Flagstaff, Arizona. Really love that stuff. Um, carried me uh, an open L, uh, just a little pocket knife. Um, let's see what I have left of my caffeine pills. And I think the last thing I had in here was a set of uh, spare batteries. Um, I'm not even gonna try to open this, but there's a set of triple A's, three triple A's for my headlamp two double A's uh, for my E-Trex. That's the mag tank. In my feed bags, let's see. So I had my uh, in-reach uh, GPS, or sorry, not GPS, but my satellite device, uh, ready and easily accessible. Um, kept, oh yeah, my goodie bag of pills. They're looking like they got nice and wet, but I got all sorts of stuff in here, caffeine pills, uh, Painkillers, uh, Prilosec for my gut, Pepto-Bismol, just uh, this is the drugstore uh, in-house. And then inside I was keeping food. So let's see what we got going on here. Um, oh yeah, some nice Heather's Choice pack of runes. Still got some of those. That's going to be a nice treat later on. Uh, yeah, another pack of rune, a little cosmic brownie, some, some Reese's. Uh, Wrappers, more Reese's, some Stinger gummies, another pack of Rune. Wow, I'm rich in pack of Runes. That's awesome. And uh, and that looks like that. A lot of food. Uh, in the other feed bag, <coughs> scored this uh, Princeton Tech. Found this out on the trail. It was buried. I just saw like the strap sticking out. A musher must have dropped that. Um, some uh, salt tablets. So more drugstore going on there. And inside, I think this was my savory bag. So yeah, on this side, so basically it kind of had it. So it was like one side was mostly sweet, one side was mostly savory. So we still got some crackers left. Oh, trail butter. I fell in love with this stuff hard on the trip. Some more butter. Uh, yeah, what do we got? More trail butter and uh, some Welchers. Key, awesome. All right, that was feed bags and, uh, and, uh, um, and mag tank. Okay, uh, let's break down what's actually on the bike itself. So on my fork, uh, I was running the um, Obeja Negra um, bootlegger uh, bags. These are direct uh, bolt-on bags to so the fork, which is really nice. And then they offer a little bit of insulation, uh, really easy, simple system to carry my thermoses. So I carried two 20 ounce um, Stanley thermoses and this was also a like sweet savory situation. So in one of them, I carried like a bone broth or I put bouillon cubes salty to keep my sodium levels up, liquids in there. And the other one I'd often put hot cocoa or tea or something else. And so 
that's what was going on in my fork bags. I was carrying my uh, hot, hot thermoses, hot beverages. Um, for my pogies, I was um, rocking the, uh, the 45, Cobra fi 45 North Cobra Fists. Um, and then I went ahead and sewed on these pockets. And the pockets are for these custom, uh, again, Apocalypse Designs made these for me, um, extenders. And these were really essential for when it gets really cold. I throw these guys on, it really cuts the wind chill into the, into the pokey and keeping my hands a lot warmer. So when it got, but when it was warm and I needed to cool off, these guys came off and they can live in, in my pockets right there. Um, let's break down what's actually in the frame bag itself. So on the non-drivetrain non non side, I was carrying uh, a lot of um, more like logistical equipment and on the drive side I was carrying food. So let's do the non-drive side, carrying my pump. This is a uh, Bond Traeger pump. I don't remember the exact model. Um, so check out the description, but this is kind of a high volume pump uh, and I found it, it uh, performs really well in the cold. So that's been, that's been essential there. Uh, let's see what else have we got going on in here. Uh, that's sanitary. Uh, that's good to see. I kept my bathroom kit right alongside with my spoon and my toothbrush, just where they all should go, right next to each other. Um, a rag and uh, my chain lube. Uh, I was carrying, I actually have a lower pocket on here, so I was carrying a number of tools. This I'm carrying, this is a 20 mil wrench because of the customized, uh, um, oh wow, I'm having a, a, a mind melt right now. We're gonna have to cut this out of the video. Um, uh, derailleur hanger. Uh, this is the 20 millimeter wrench for uh, the derailleur hanger. And then what else do I have in this pocket? I have all the essentials. All right. So I was carrying in that lower pocket a whole bunch of stuff. I was carrying my Leatherman, uh, which is right acts as my pliers and it also has a knife on it. Uh, I was carrying uh, this, uh, a larger multi-tool um, as a backup, my tire lever, uh, a Dyna plug set, and a four, five, and a six stubby uh, um, wrenches. Okay, we're still not even done with the non-drive side. Still keeping stuff. Uh, okay, more toiletries, uh, wet wipes, and a couple of spare um, hand warmers. In the, on the drive side of the frame bag, we have another Champions uh, logo. There you go, drop one and you get one. Isn't that fun? We love that. It's like it never, it never went anywhere, everybody. Look at that. Uh, nice, my uh, face mask, still wet from uh, the last time I used it. And then I was keeping, I ended up kind of switching my system up and I ended up with mostly carrying my food in the frame bag. It was just the easiest to get in and out of and with how much I was eating, I really wanted to keep, keep my food easily accessible. So just a plethora of, of snacks, We've got some cookies, some gummy worms, some Doritos chips, some cookies, some jerky. Oh, nice, another cosmic brownie. Looks like uh, some Gorp. Uh, cookies, Pop-Tarts, some pepperoni. Uh, Couple of Kind Bars, an old foot warmer. Hey, another Heather's Choice pack of Rune. Uh, some more crushed up chips. Uh, some gummy bears. Oh, this is like Christmas in here. This is great. Oh, nice, another bar. Uh, my spare tube. 
Oh, nice. And my cash, cash battery and charging cable uh, and wall plug for the iPhone. Um, and then let's see, last but not least would be just a couple of random things that I had here on the cockpit. I kept my goggles nice and easily accessible. It was really when we were on the coast that I needed to do that because the, the wind is uh, so extreme out here. Um, carried my E-Trex uh, GPS unit right on the front. I have my um, spot tracking device right here for the race. Um, kept my headlamp always right here ready to be used. Uh, my black diamond headlamp, and then finally is my Phoenix uh, bike light that I used on a K-Edge uh, mounting system so that I could have the bike light and then I had a, a GoPro for uh, shooting footage along the way. Okay, moving on to the, uh, the, the rear bike rack. Uh, let's take a look at what was in the uh, Revelate Nano uh, panniers. So, Again, this is a more easily accessible bag, so when I thought about what I need in there, it was, uh, what do I wanna, if I need to just pull something out quickly, what goes in there? So, first thing I had there was easily accessible uh, down shorts. When it did get really cold, those went on over my cargo pants. So that's, uh, those were key, those are a, a set of mountain hardware down shorts. And then I kept a lot of my like nighttime food, cookable food right in here. So, yeah, got a couple bags of chips there. And then otherwise, I've just got this huge collection, whoa, of, uh, <laughs> these are all Heather's Choice uh, meals that I still, still have with me. Um, and yeah, that's everything that was in that bag. Um, in the other side, I kept my cook, cooking system. So I have my uh, fuel bottle carrying uh, the white gas and then my um, my pot stove system. So my stove, I was using a uh, MSR XKG, probably missing, miss, messing up the order of those letters, but uh, XKG I believe is what it is. That's kind of their mountaineering uh, whisper light equivalent. And then I carried my little mini pot set and in there, this is really grody. Didn't wash this after last time I cooked. I got some birch bark, uh, stove repair kit, uh, matches, lighter. Uh, so that's all that is what lived in there. Looks like I have my uh, Patagonia Houdini wind vest, or sorry, wind, wind uh, breaker in here. Uh, carrying my sun hat. More food, got a thing of M&Ms, a uh, Ben & Jerry's chocolate bar. That'll be yummy later. Um, my bike repair kit, I won't break the whole thing down right now, but uh, yeah, uh, all, all my essentials are in there. Um, other than what I kind of carry, it's more easily accessible wrenches and stuff, but this has like a patch kit. Um, it's, uh, it's got a bunch of stuff. Bolts, uh, extra bolts, chain breaker, um, uh, spoke wrench, spare valve, extra hanger, you name it. Uh, it's all, all in this baggie here. Looks like a little bit of more food. And then my little camp kit had like uh, a little sewing kit and some baby powder and some uh, like rash cream. So that's the, uh, the nano, the nano panniers. All right, y'all, uh, let's get this thing finished up. So finally uh, is this custom duffel bag made for me by Apocalypse Design. Um, I'll just highlight, I use the austere buckles, uh, ratchet straps, uh, both on the front rack system and then on the rear. These ones I customized and I made the, these kind of like girth hitch loops. So then there's a tail end or the female and the male uh, on either side of the rack. That's what holds this bag into place. In here is basically, I'm not gonna ever, I don't access this bag except for at night. So th that was kind of the idea is I typically wouldn't open it up um, until I got to camp or went inside somewhere and then I can just take it off and carry it with me indoors. Uh, let's see, I've got my 
my main wind layer that has an additional zipper so that rough that you saw that was on my Ibex Puffy, I can also remove and I can put it onto this. This is a Patagonia ski jacket um, that I use a lot of. Um, let's see, we got my uh, some Feathered Friends down booties, Essential. Um, my ProTech uh, top. Um, some socks, some more socks, and some more socks. Uh, Extra Tough, go Vermont. Carry in here, my electronics kit. Uh, this just has a whole plethora of everything in it. A uh, second cache battery, all sorts of cables, uh, wall charging plugs. Uh, for all the various electronics I need and then a spare headlamp and uh, this is my Phoenix uh, spare headlamp that I use. Uh, carried a basic essential um, first aid kit. I basically just got some, you know, gauze, band-aids, a little bit of tape. Um, yeah, if I had an emergency. Never used it. That's a good thing. Um, hey, more socks. Uh, my sleeping pad. It's the um, Thermrest Neo Air, I think they call that one. Um, my OG, love this thing, it's looking really good. Uh, Ibex, this is an old indie that I turned into a short sleeve and this might have been its last trip. Um, uh, a hot drinks kit, so this just has tea, hot cocoa, you name it. Uh, things to make uh, nice warm, warm drinks in the evening. Uh, let's see, I have uh, a bivy, um, a bivy sack that uh, I never used, but I basically have it if I ever found myself in kind of just like a worst case scenario, caught out and I'm having to sleep out and, and it was really, really cold and things were really bad. This is just an additional piece of uh, insulation, warmth, you know, just another layer uh, from the elements. Um, I don't like to use it because your sleep system ends up wet in the morning, but if you need to, I just carry it and I never use it. So that's a good thing. Uh, I got my wiggies here. These are an overboot. This year was an incredibly cold year. So uh, this is my third year doing the ITI. The last two years I had to use these uh, for water crossings this year. We never had any open water to deal with, but still an essential piece of gear that is important to carry. Once again, didn't use it and that's a good thing. All right, we're getting down there couple of uh, extra volet straps for emergencies, some more socks because, you know, feet, happy feet is, uh, makes for a happy person. I've got this stuff sack, so I um, kind of strategically sent my food resupply in this stuff sack to cripple, and then I had this as a snow sack for afterwards. So when you get to a cabin or something, you go outside, you fill this with snow, and you can bring it inside and that's how you make hot water, right? And so then you can keep filling the pot with snow and, and keep melting more and more to make hot water instead of constantly going outside to fill your pot. So that's what this guy was for. Oh man, we just got some rando, rando things in here left. Some medical tape, some extra gorilla tape, uh, some extra things of face tape. And that's, that's it. That's the whole... That's the whole gear, y'all. That was everything. Uh, amazing that all of this uh, fit onto the bike so cleanly. All right, so that's my rig for the Iditarod Trail Invitational 2024. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, it was definitely an epic year uh, with an incredible amount of uh, challenges from really cold weather to epic whiteout snowstorms to uh, major wind advisories in effect once we hit the coast. Uh, and so uh, incredibly grateful to have had this stellar equipment, this amazing bike, and everything that got us up here safely. Thanks for watching, everybody.